So much media, so little time. Who keeps track of it all? That would be me. This is Bob Andelman, and this is a Mr. Media interview. You know, MrMedia.com, MRMedia.com. Come on by and check us out sometime soon. Brought to you today on iPhones, Android, Palm, and BlackBerry by the Stitcher app for mobile devices. Also available by free subscription on iTunes. Mr. Media is also sponsored by ThePartyAuthority.us. Planning a wedding, mitzvah, or corporate event? For any and all occasions, call the Party Authority nationwide at 1-800-DIAL-DJs. That's 1-800-342-5357, where one call does it all. So, uh, where was I before the commercial? Um, let me... Oh, yeah. Uh, Mr. Media is recorded live from St. Petersburg, Florida, the new new media capital of the world and hometown of actors Patrick Wilson and Angela Bassett, St. Petersburg, Florida. Well, granted, the role for which everyone best, or maybe worst, remembers actor Ken Davidian is Azmat Bagatov, Sasha Baron Cohen's manager in the 2006 movie Borat, Cultural Learnings of America for Make Benefit Glorious Nation of Kazakhstan. Anyone who saw it will forever have the image of Davidian and Cohen wrestling naked in a motel room, scalded into their brains. Just for fun, then, here's the original trailer for Borat. of a Kazakhstan. It's nice. My hobbies. Ping pong. Disco dance. And sunbathe. This is my house. Entry, place. This is where I live. And my bed. This is a VCR recorded. And this is her play cassettes. Now I show you outside from my houses. Tisha, and this is Natalia. She is my sister. She is number four prostitute in all of Kazakhstan. Nice. Although Kazakhstan a glorious country, it have a problem too. This why Ministry of Information have decided to send me to U.S. and A. to learn a lessons for Kazakhstan. I go to America! America! I love that movie. I just want to say. <laughs> but uh, Ken Davidian has appeared in plenty of other films fully clothed. He's a terrific character actor, and from what I've seen of him being interviewed elsewhere, quite a gentle soul. In other words, nothing at all like Azamat. Now, he recently played the role of Uncle Bernie to perfection in an episode of NBC's Chuck, titled Chuck vs. the First Kill. He was also starker in the otherwise forgettable Steve Carell remake of Get Smart. And he's also been seen in movies such as Soul Man, Meet the, Starten, Meet the Spartans, <laughs> Meet the Spartans, Holes, and SWAT, as well as TV shows such as The Closer, ER, and Ghost Whisperer. Now, coming up, his new film Prankster just got picked up for distribution and will come out in October. He also finished a feature film with former American Idol finalist Catherine McVie and Dave Annabel of Brothers and Sisters called You May Not Kiss the Bride. It also stars Rob Schneider, Mina Savari, Tia Carrere, Kathy Bates, and Vinnie Jones. Also in the pipeline is another film, Melvin Smarty. Now, Davidian also own, co-owns an L.A.-based French dipped sandwich restaurant called The Dip and a hot dog restaurant in Sherman Oaks called The Infield. Ken, welcome to Mr. Media. Thank you very much, and did you really have to show that? <laughs> Did you really, you. you know, I know that that's going to be uh, when I'm dead. They're going to show a picture of my 8x10, regular 8x10, hello, my uh, uh, send out to, to agent's picture. And next to that, they're going to show me naked in an elevator. 
and say <laughs> he died. It doesn't matter if I win eight Academy Awards. That's the first thing they're going to talk about. Well, and, my, and Ken, my naked body. <laughs> And you know, I was gonna, I, I was gonna apologize in advance for bringing this up, but I mean, does it, does it really kill you a little inside every time someone wants to talk to you about wrestling naked with Borat over any other films or TV shows you've done? Not at all. Honest. If you want the truth, uh, thank you, God. That's, that, <laughs> you know, if I knew running around naked would get me famous, I would have done it when I was twenty. <laughs> Well, I'm really glad to hear that because I really want to know what Sasha Baron Cohen said to you, how he convinced you to do that. And I'm guessing it did not read that funny in a script. No, first there was no script. So it was, everything was improv and right there most of the time, 90%. Now the the, uh, wrestling scene in the bedroom, in the uh, hotel room, that took about a half a day, and we had a stunt coordinator, and and you know that one we worked on. But running into the to the uh, uh, brokers' convention, running into the lobby of the elevator, running in the lobby that was four different hotels. We ran around naked, and apparently there's some kind of rule that they don't like you naked in a hotel. Uh, <laughs> so we we had to leave each different hotel. <laughs> Uh, Ken, is it possible they just didn't like you naked in the hotel? I'm not sure, but I think that's discrimination. <laughs> so, but uh, we ran around. I'll tell you, we actually uh, came up with this idea. He came up with this idea in Dallas that I was told we were going to do this. And I kept saying to them, you know, a fat guy in boxers, that's funny. That's funny. Funny, funny. No, I want naked. We're going to go naked. And so we actually ran into a engineer's convention at 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock in the afternoon somewhere in the Dallas area. And we started doing our stick with each other, and I looked into his eyes, and I can see him looking at the audience, and then he just stopped. He, he, he just went out of character and turned around and said, we're not getting any reaction, let's go. And we walked out of there like we were totally dressed. We just walked out very casually, <laughs> naked. Uh, and then we did the same thing. He decided that uh, to do it in a where there's women, and it's an evening affair. So we did it at that banquet. And uh, about three months later, five months later, some 16-year-old comes to the window at the infield, and I would happen to be there, and he looks at me and he goes, Hey, I saw you naked. And I said, Oh, like, have you seen a preview of the movie? And he says, What are you talking about? My father's a broker. I was inside that uh, uh, banquet room. I really <laughs> saw you naked. And I gave the kid a hot dog. I said, Hey, man, hot dog's on me, kid. So that's oh my I started God. being naked. Well, I, you know, I... Um... It just it just struck me. I, I'm I'm gonna t- I want to talk to you in a, in a few minutes about uh, the Last Day Foundation, the short uh, film you did with John Lovitz. But I suddenly it went through my head what he used to say about his wife Morgan Fairchild, whom I've seen naked. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he he is a, a, a real good friend, and we met at a uh, a table read, and uh, that was very exciting for me because. Uh, Adam Sandler was there, and uh, uh, yeah. there was just it was just full of, of the funny people. Uh, uh, Michael Keaton was there, uh, and uh, Dennis had written uh, 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 Dennis and Larry Miller had written something, and we had a table read, and nothing ever became of it except I became great friends with Lovett, and my son wrote the short Last Day Foundation, and. I kept thinking, are you nuts? You really want me to do this? And uh, they really did, and they, we pitched it to John, and he said, sure. And uh, it was a lot of fun. But uh, well, in, 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 that ca- in that case, let's skip ahead a little bit. I, I still have a few more things to ask you about uh, 
uh, Borat, but uh, since we've been talking about it, let's not keep people in suspense. Uh, folks, here's a little clip from uh, the short uh, parody film that Ken did with John Lovitz. It was directed by uh, Ken's son, Aaron Davidian. It's called Last Day Foundation. Take a look at this. Hi, Jennifer Saunders here. Welcome to the final day of this week's series. I'm here with the representative of the Last Day Foundation, Mr. Brant Hollister. Thank you, Jennifer. Our goal at the Last Day Foundation is to make young people's dreams come true. Well, the terminally ill ones, of course. And today, our fortunate unfortunate will meet his idol, veteran character actor, Ken Davidian. Who? <laughs> hey, Jimmy. We have just received a very special video message from your favorite actor. <coughs> hey, Johnny! I heard you're a big fan. Hey, sir. Huh? Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy! I heard you're a big fan. So I want to invite you to come to sunny Hollywood to spend the day with me. Hey, hey. Hey. Hold on. Okay. To do. Go fast. Very easy. I want to invite you to Sunny Hollywood to spend the whole day with me. So come on down, baby. We'll see you. We're gonna have a great time. Hey, this kid better not die on me. Only happened once. Ever since I saw him on Gilmore Girls, I knew he was gonna be a star. He is so funny, hairy, and fat. I can't stop laughing. <laughs> He's so funny. He puts me in stitches. Literally. You want to see the scar? <laughs> um, you can see the rest of The Last Day Foundation, the clip, on YouTube. Just search either Last Day Foundation or search Ken Davidian. Um, and the rest of it, it gets even funnier. And there's a scene uh, shot outside of one of... Uh, Ken's restaurants. Uh, if you if you pay strict attention there at the end. Um, all right, let's let uh, Ken. Let's come back to uh, Borat for just a couple minutes uh, before we take a break. Uh, you mentioned this. This almost slipped by me. You you mentioned that uh, there was a stunt coordinator for the uh, wrestling scene in the uh, hotel room. Uh, what exactly does a stunt coordinator do to um, uh, coordinate two naked men wrestling around a hotel room? Most of the time, he had his eyes covered. <laughs> so, not much got done. No, you know the uh, uh, the lamp that we threw and a uh, 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 couple of the things that's required by the SAG that somebody's there and, and make sure that, you know, like they know that they showed us how to flip and all of that stuff. So, actually, <laughs> after the whole thing was done, we were getting dressed, and the stunt coordinator left. Said, thank you very much, goodbye, and shook hands. And he left, and then he came back about 15 minutes later and gave me a stunt coordinator's uh, baseball cap because he said I was so great. How do you like that? <laughs> now, how, how does one's family react uh, to something like that? Okay, when, we were, uh, when it was screened at, at uh, Fox, my two kids were with me, and uh, they're both, in, you know, in their in their twenties, uh, uh, late twenties. Uh, and after the whole thing was over, there was a clip that Larry Charles put in there that was part of a, a, a movie that was called The Making of Borat. And uh, we had a director and everything, and a guy went with us everywhere uh, and talked to us before what was going on. So uh, somewhere out there is this movie, The Making of Borat. Hmm. And uh, they came to me and they put the camera in my face. So well, we're gonna, you're going to run naked? And I, so that's when I said, listen, guys, really, you don't want me to do this. It's, it's not very attractive. Are you sure? And, and at least my, ch my two sons saw that I tried to get out of it. Then hmm. at the, and, and then I, we told my wife, he's running naked in the film. And when you tell people he's running naked in a film, they think to themselves, well, this is a studio film and there's censors and, you know, ah, okay, he's running naked. He's not really running naked. He's just running naked. It's movie thing, right? 
Mm-hmm. So I took my wife to the premiere, and she saw me running naked. And she <laughs> turned around, and this is in Chinese theater. Damn, am I glad you didn't break your hip. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, okay, man, we have, because we were worried about my medical condition, you have completely tuned out the fact that I was running naked, and now I have been seen naked by everybody. She just uh, tuned it out, was only worried what happened to your hip, because I had a hip replacement three months, two and a half months before we started shooting. Oh, wow. So well, they were like, I mean, they were always aware of it, like when we were running to the ice cream truck, it, uh, we, I remember one time we were running middle of the night, and uh, uh, they said, are you all right? Are you all right? And they, you know, they would only do so, uh, so much. Uh, but I got through it, and it was great. I never had a problem. But that's what she was worried about. Jeez. Well, I promise you, uh, no more naked wrestling questions. Let me ask you this last Borat question, and we'll move on to things that are more current. Do you think we'll ever see a Borat sequel? I don't know. It's not up to me. If it was up to me, you would. Okay. It's not up to me. I, and if it was up to Murdoch, you would. And if it was up to Fox, you would. So uh, I think that production thinks that it would be too difficult to do. I, I don't know. I don't agree with that. Mm. All right. Well, let's change gears a little bit here. Um, Ken, you uh, you appeared not too long ago in an episode of what is one of my favorite shows, uh, NBC's Chuck, and I wondered if you could tell us, uh, the, the, the many Chuck fans out here, anything uh, interesting from the set or about the show's stars, anything about being on that? Well, I liked everybody on it. The, uh, uh, the, the, the actual Swedish girl, uh, Sarah, I believe her name is, uh, she's very good friends with... Uh, uh, my PR girl, and uh, it was really like a lot of fun. I think the worst part about it is that I died, and that was the the whole concept. It was like a, a weekend at Bernie's when it was discussed to me. It was, you know, you're going to die, and they're going to take you out, and uh, you got to go limp. And I, you know, I told her, this is, you know, this is the, the second film I went limp in. Uh, <laughs> and I tell these people, you don't realize it may look funny, but whoever I'm going limp with better be strong and it's <laughs> Zach and 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 uh, uh his partner to i mean i could tell that the the strain they were having to try to keep me up but it was a lot of fun because uh i got shot uh i ran around upstairs and and we got shot at so it, it, it was a lot of fun and i gotta tell you zach has been uh truly uh a, a, a great guy a polite wonderful young man you know every time i see him everywhere hi ken how are you he's really you know it's very unusual because sometimes uh uh you see that these guys get all crazy and these girls get all crazy and they're all over uh uh, tmz and inquire but he is truly a, a wonderful kid i like him very much well, uh, folks, next up for Ken is a film uh, called You May Not Kiss the Bride, which stars uh, Catherine McVie as his daughter and Dave Annable from uh, Brothers and Sisters. Uh, I, and I believe Dave plays his future son-in-law. Um, here is a little background on this film, which we get from an Entertainment Tonight clip. We were talking about how uh, it is our dream to do a romantic comedy. So I think both of us are really excited because we're living out a little piece of our dream. Welcome, everyone. I want to drink a toast to the newlyweds. The modern set. His name is Nikita. He is a Croatian businessman who's come to America, and he's got himself citizenship for him and his wife, but his daughter, his beautiful, beautiful daughter, played by Catherine McLean, doesn't have citizenship. 
So he figures, let's wheel and deal and get citizenship for him. But there are other things beyond his control that are happening that he really doesn't know about. That's really why they're not paying, they're not taking the bribe for the citizenship. So he comes up with this wonderful great idea that almost everybody has come up with. Let's marry somebody to get a green card. And that's where we're at. The problem in this whole dynamic is they fall in love. And uh, that's where the cute stuff starts. So, and I like that. I, I'm one of those guys with the tear at the end. Of the <laughs> uh, Ken, based on what little I've seen, this looks like a real sweet role for you. It was. It was a lot of fun. I was in, throughout the movie. Uh, 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 it was just fantastic working with David and uh, uh, Catherine. And Vinnie Jones is really like he's always a serious-looking guy. He's going to kill somebody or something. But honest to God, what a sweet guy. Uh, uh, we had Vinnie Jones's dad uh, come down. We had a birthday party for him because we were in Hawaii. And shooting that thing was fantastic. It was so beautiful. And finally, I saw the film about a month and a half ago. Uh, and it, to be honest with you, I just got off the phone with the director of the film because I'm, I'm, I love the, the, the way all this stuff works and I'm, I'm trying to help uh, get both of these films distri- distribution. So uh, it's, it's in the business side of it, but it's a lot of fun and it's very exciting, you know. Uh, but I really like this, this, both of these films that I did. You're going to talk about Melvin Smarty, but, but uh, uh, You May Not Kiss the Bride was fabulous and then it's it's it, it, it was just great they brought in uh, uh kathy bates uh mm-hmm. she's playing david's mother and uh then there was uh someone else somebody's trying to move their car and i'm uh in their way so <laughs> I, I, i'm moving my car okay uh kathy kathy bates uh, played his mother, and uh, the uh, uh, Vinnie Jones played my bad guy, and but we were really all just it just meshed together so well, and I kept thinking, how is this going to work? And when I left it, and then I saw the film, I thought, gee, I would hire this guy to to, to direct a film that I'm doing. I really liked the way he did it, and it really came out uh, great. And the shots are so beautiful in Hawaii. Uh, and it was it's just, it was great. Went to Turtle Bay and golfed, uh, and I don't play golf. Uh, went snorkeling <laughs> and uh, uh, went skin diving. It was a lot of fun. It was, it was great, and it was a great, it's a great little film. Great. Well, uh, you know, before we run out of time, I want you to tell us a little bit about your two restaurants, uh, The Dip in Los Angeles and The Infield in Sherman Oaks. Uh, are, they, are they passive investments, or are you really involved? My wife runs the dip. Now, if you're married, you know that I'm involved. But uh, it's it's one of those things that if I criticize something that's going on in the restaurant that I created, with the menus that I created, then it's not good. So I really, you know, I go there and say hi. The infield was an idea that my son came up with, and... Uh, I told him, I says, if you want to use the word the dip, which on the wall it says the dip presents, the Mm -hmm. infield. I says, if you want to use the dip, you have to wow me with the menu. You can't put a hot dog and some chili on it and call it a a hot dog stand. So it's it's got a great menu. We've got hot dogs from uh, chili dogs to a fried Twinkie dog. Uh, We have... 15 different types of hot dogs, from a veggie dog to a Kobe beef dog to a, a, a Dodger dog. And we've got stadium seating outside. So oh. there's seats from Angel Stadium, Dodger Stadium, uh, uh, the Wrigley Field, and four or five different stadiums. Hmm. Wow. Well, it sounds pretty good. I'd, I'd say that's something people should think about. Uh, stopping by the next time they're in LA, or if they're already in LA, check it out. And and folks, uh, you can you can watch for uh, actor Ken Davidian in three upcoming films. Uh, you may not kiss the bride, prankster, and Melvin Smarty. And you can order many of his past movies, including, of course, 
Borat online at mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. Uh, Ken, are you anywhere online that people can find you? Uh, that's a real good question. That's a very good question. I don't know how to work the machine. <laughs> okay. So I'm, well, uh, uh, I actually have a Facebook, and I have a uh, – uh, and I remember when they put that uh, uh, MySpace together. Now they've got a, a Facebook together. But my son Aaron, who uh, was the writer of that short, takes care of that, that stuff. I barely okay. get my email. <laughs> fair enough, fair my, enough. My car, my car does more stuff than I know. I, I, I don't know how to use the, the, the stuff in the car. So All right. The technology <laughs> is amazing. Well, uh, Ken, it has been a great pleasure and a lot of fun talking to you today, and I just want to thank you for joining us on Mr. Media. Thank you very much, and, and thank your fans, man. This, it's really nice. Thank you very much. I, honest, I, it's nice to know people care. Well, we appreciate that, and we all enjoyed the movie. I'm, I'm no doubt about that. Um, thanks, uh, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Mr. Media. All right. And, folks, for more original interviews with your favorite actors, you can surf over to our main website, mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. And you can now hear Mr. Media while you're on the go with Stitcher Radio. Stitcher is a free news and talk mobile application. The latest episode of Mr. Media is always available for you. No syncing needed and no memory wasted. It's available for your iPhone, your Palm Pre, Android phones, or your BlackBerry. Downloading is easy. Just go to Stitcher.com or check out the App Store for your individual mobile phone. Subscribe to Mr. Media on iTunes and you'll never miss a show. Just search Mr. Media Interviews from within iTunes and subscribe for free. You can also follow me on Facebook or on Twitter. It's Twitter.com slash Andelman or on Facebook. Just search Mr. Media Interviews. Thanks so much for joining us today. I really appreciate you sharing a piece of your day with Mr. Media. Thanks for listening, everybody. Come back real soon.